Hi, Mads. Uh, <laughs> good man. <laughs> uh and so i'm so glad we're doing this because um, i feel like um, we've known each other for so long and we've spoken about so many things uh especially to do with like love dating and all of that and i feel like uh, i want to get some of our conversations on record uh just just yeah. so that you know anyone else who's seeing this could possibly relate to it and and yeah, know, yeah. even celebrities yeah. like you uh have normal lives like us <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i hate the word celebrity but it's just yeah it's very overused but i guess that that's what before i was in the field even i would call actors and stuff like look at them in a different light and stuff but actually everyone's made from the same same flame same flesh and bones so right. yeah it's uh, it's yeah it's yeah it's nothing so, it's yeah. nothing very i mean let's talk about times when like we were normal people and you were not a celebrity <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so uh, it it was n- nothing much has changed dude honestly like you know y- you do get the the one off person who is more interested in you because of the fame or because of um, you know looking at you through this public eye but um, you can tell you can tell the genuine people from from the rest and uh, i usually like if i'm if i want to date someone or if if it's uh, something that if someone i'm interested in it's usually through a common friend it's usually i would want at least you know certain degrees of separation and not like a complete random stranger because i, I don't know it just it just seems less creepy it seems more validated and like it's just right. something that i've i've never dated a complete stranger so yeah i mean I've that's how people there. dated like 20 years ago like before apps yeah. were a thing right like you you yeah. almost always met someone through school or college or through friends and family and uh, yeah exactly it's, it it was never yeah. like especially how would you like because we didn't have social media and we didn't have dating apps and stuff you can't randomly meet a person without correct. some connection i guess correct yeah correct. so But while have- yeah while while i think you know uh, in the in the last 7 8 years or something like dating apps have become a big thing how how would you kind of uh, you know uh, think about your own journey in terms of dating from like let's say when you started dating to today yeah how is yeah. the way you think evolved over time like do you think about dating oh, differently oh today oh god yeah it's evolved heavily <laughs> i mean maybe because you know i'm like from from college to now mm-hmm. you look at you look at uh the opposite sex very differently like i was in an all girls school and then i after the 10th grade i was in coed all through obviously so i was in christ and then ramaya and you know whatever did my masters you you kind of especially with me like i have five brothers right and i've grown up with guys at home so yeah. it's like a bit i i've just known guys of all ages and i've just been comfortable with guys all along Right. so dating was never too much of a struggle or anything i would just treat them how i would treat any of my brother's friends and this i would like treat like them like your brothers <laughs> <laughs> yeah like my brother's friends luckily <laughs> but uh, but actually the i i have so many guy friends who i do treat like my brothers because i don't know any other way right so right. um it, yeah i i definitely uh, platonicized a lot of <laughs> people who do not want to be but uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's easy to do that but when it comes to uh, when it comes to dating like i used to be very okay fine like in this really if i date somebody i it, we just have to be entertained and we have to make each other laugh and you know we have to like have that spark and things like that was like those things were really important but right. now when i think about dating i'm like can we grow together in our individual lives you know can are we like suddenly i'm thinking about it in, a, in such a different way because like i've been in relationships where people i've like i've not even even, even if they were like short term relationship thank, thank god they were short term and they were short term because of this reason where i had to like be half a mother and half a girlfriend you know <laughs> and, and that's a bit like i can't keep i can't keep like pushing you and making you you know like not do this or do this or like you know grow in this and grow in that and 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 make myself do it as well like it's a bit too much 
I could do it in college, but I really can't do it anymore. Though. Like it's become very different uh, in that sense. Like when it comes to doing with each other, being uh, being each other's uh, you know driving force, things like that. And looks has never really been a priority for me. So in that way, I think I've not evolved much. Like it, it was just always personality to me that mattered more than more than right. physical looks. Right. So. uh that way not much but also i've uh, evolved in the sense of the other person's morals uh, right. and values right like that's another huge area where i've evolved quite a bit like i feel like if the if the values are too different then it's a bit difficult because the values are ultimately related to a lot of topics and a lot of fields in life right. where a lot of discussions happen and if your if your values are different like for example if if somebody is a racist and i'm not like right. even if it like earlier in college it would never come up right? right but now it's something that would actually come up in conversation because we're talking about different you know places country places and and stuff like right. that so right. it uh, it would definitely have a have do you what, what do you think like you know um, given that you've kind of evolved in your thinking what what matters to you in a partner today and like how do you think about that uh okay so i think fundamentally just the the other person being a kind person is and i know that's a very broad term to use because you can't really tell if somebody's kind or not like right from the start but when i say kind i don't mean like oh always like oh i'll do anything for you i'll treat you like a princess that's like that's not what i mean yeah. i mean like kind in the sense of empathy empathy you know right. being empathetic towards like uh towards ego clashes or towards uh, you know she must have gone through something or he must have gone through something and this is why they are like that and not pinpointing and blaming and that right. that's what i mean by yeah. kind you know like yeah. um, and and also to do with uh, each other's work and understanding each other's work even if you don't get it yeah. or to try and be more accommodating in that sense so that's what i mean by kind i feel like that's my topmost priority right um and uh, for me uh, you know being able to co- converse about anything is also really important like right. just being uh, being non judgy and it's hard but we have to keep you know trying yeah. to make ourselves yeah. be less yeah. like that but to be even if it's a negative thought or if it's a dark thought or if it's something that is not very welcoming in a relationship to be yeah. able to talk about it Right. right, I feel like that's uh, that. That's what makes or breaks a relationship. Because my parents right. have always been like that. Like there are certain things that my dad might say that my mom cannot stand, or like my mom says that my dad cannot stand. And right, but they do talk about it because right. it just makes you more real and it makes you more vulnerable and more compatible yeah. with the person. Like you understand yeah. them on a different level. Yeah. So, how how much do you think your family sort of influences your choices today? Like in the sense, I don't mean it. from a sense of how do they control you or not but like like what you've learned from your family how does that kind of influence what you want in a partner oh my god it's influenced it so much that i sometimes get frustrated and i feel like <laughs> i'll ask my parents why have you set such a high standard <laughs> like <laughs> like like it is insane because after like 30 years of marriage they still hold hands and it's still so cute and i'm just like oh god like where is this <laughs> going to happen this is not going to happen 3 years after marriage only it will stop happening or maybe even less right. uh, but it's like uh I feel like they've also like family and having siblings and you know things like that has also taught me a lot about adjusting and a lot right. about meeting people right. halfway right uh, middle ground things right. like that right. I can go on and on about how you know having a big family is amazing how I want to have a big family because I've had a big family right. and uh, you know just makes you easier to get along with because you have got along with so many siblings and you just right. learn to deal with each other uh, right. and right. and not let things spiral out of control so so that way and and the benchmark my parents have set for a relationship is also something that i i really get scared about i'm like how like how is, are we going to find something like that can maybe i'm being too skeptical and or like no it's it's it's, it's actually interesting that you say that because a lot of people tell me this right they they look at the parents and like i really like what my parents have with each other and i don't know if i'll ever get yeah. that and and i feel like that's a bit of a daunting thought because 
people expect yeah. to be at that stage right at the beginning and and you won't yeah. be at that stage right it, i i feel like it takes years of work to get to where you are in a relationship yeah and i think somewhere yeah. there's a lot of pressure That's for people to kind of start the way like let's say the parents are after like 30 years or 40 years right like yeah yeah do you think that that was a very good point it's like how my dad would say see i need you you know to get married to somebody who is doing financially well and you know can support you and give you the same life that we have given you i'm just like dude you took a while to reach here give him also <laughs> some time to reach there so i guess right. in the same way it makes sense right right obviously there's a lot of fluctuation in terms of uh, how your life itself is right you're constantly going to be yeah. working on yourself and you know figuring out like uh, where yeah. your career is headed so how does that affect your relationships like do you kind of sometimes take your work to relationships where you're constantly yeah. fretting about what's happening with your life and you can't really like yeah. listen to that that's actually i'm like i'm now i'm just going to be thinking out loud because uh, you've opened up this pandora's box <laughs> so two things that this industry does is it makes you thick skin right okay like it 100% makes you thick, thick, like gives you a thicker skin um over 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 time and the second thing is you keep evolving physically as well because it's yeah. just a change in lifestyle and yeah. you know yeah. and you do end up talking a lot about yourself because once you're in the limelight yeah uh, inevitably you kind of uh, start looking at yourself differently and, and right. when you're out in the open like i remember there was one time when i was in a relationship and uh, i just did not want him to hold my hand in public and because my movie had just come out and you know right. stuff like right. that and uh, it made me a bit uh, it made me a bit uncomfortable but only later did i understand what it did for him you know? right right because for him i am that one person that's important and he wants to express himself and right. i'm not letting him do that right so right. um so i did under- i understood it a couple of weeks later right. but right. Uh, at that moment of time it was just like you know i am more important right now because it is me who is like being looked at right now through this and that and suddenly if people like because when i i used to hang out in kolmangla there are a lot of malayalis that there and right. they would come to me while i'm even just sitting at a pub or something you know right. and be like right. oh can we take a selfie and stuff yeah. so i'm I, and i don't know when it's going to happen so i'm constantly uh, a bit guarded about right. my, what i'm doing right where right. whereas i actually want to be more warm and more normal but right. it does uh, it just makes you a bit uncomfortable especially when you've heard all these traumatic stories about oh this picture got leaked that video got leaked and right. you know you right. Right. you kind of yeah. just become so much more cautious and yeah. i wish uh, i wish i didn't become like that but it's just the nature of the beast like it's right. what right it's just what uh, it it is what sometimes people will morph pictures and all and make up complete utter bullshit which doesn't exist <laughs> you know like like i saw this uh, picture of mine on a youtube video huh. um and then it said okay it said madhuri vigyanta fort or some rubbish and then like pictures of me working out and videos of me working out and suddenly in between all this there was a random picture of some other woman in wearing very like compromising clothing and stuff like that <laughs> and i was like dude that's not even me like it doesn't even look like me you know she just has big eyes yeah. but it doesn't even look like me and everyone just thinks it's me because they they've just seen me in a couple of films and they're like i must be her earlier back in the day <laughs> and and you just have to learn to let go like learn <laughs> the subtle art of letting go and just meditate <laughs> just yeah you can't i can't put in so much energy to you know i earlier i wanted to report it i wanted to tell you to take it down and all like if i do all this i'll just lose my mind so, so yeah, it's, it's, till date have you have you been with anybody who's who's dealt the, dealt with this in a way that's been like nice as a partner yeah yeah um uh, i would say actually no because um <laughs> i'll explain to you what i mean i was like yeah this person no no <laughs> no so i'll explain okay so I mean. tell me actually what's the best that you've seen rather than yeah sorry. yeah so i've i've um if i take a couple of uh uh what do you call values from two people then it'll be a nice a nice right. mix to have right but um so i i started doing films and all when i was uh, dating uh my ex boyfriend and he right. kind of saw the transition like right. he saw me go from not doing movies to doing movies 
and so we would discuss the changes that were happening to me right. we would be very proactive about it so uh, so he would understand a lot but then mentally and emotionally i started growing much faster than him right uh, which is which is something that kind of uh, made things a bit difficult you know right so uh, he was very supportive in the sense of understanding why i'm being that way you know so that was really good and then after that after doing a couple of films um i i, I mean i was single for a while and then i started dating someone else and he was also extremely supportive when it came to uh, not looking at that side of my life or not right. thinking of me as like it would never affect um, right. the dynamic between us right. you know or like oh okay so many people are sending you you know very flirty messages or very like huge compliments and those things would never come into the picture uh, but then like say going for a, going for an after party after an award show or something and you know would would create a lot of conversation about you know but what if this person did this and what if that person, but so what did you do to like you know and and it's not a big deal to me at all but it ended up being a little bit of a big deal to him so i mean i don't expect someone to completely be understand it if they're not in the field you know if they're not in the field they're not going to understand it on that level so i have yeah. to kind of compromise their feel and just be uh, be someone who who's like okay fine i understand that you have an issue with it but you know this is this is how it's going to be and I, and maybe we can have like a a middle ground where i don't do certain things that upset you or you know we can just talk about stuff or you know Got you it. can look at my social media whenever you want and see that i'm actually not taking any of these things seriously like i but right now as of now i i'm still yet to find that person who you know Got who it. i'm completely comfortable with then Yeah. Got it. You know, given what you mm-hmm. do, and also your own personal preference, where you want to be introduced through, uh, you know, uh, friends and family. Um, obviously, yeah. I'm guessing you've never kind of tried any of these dating apps, and uh, yeah, I haven't. I haven't. And I haven't even tried a single dating app. But earlier, I just used to feel like, oh, okay, people I don't know, people I know only are so creepy. People I don't know will be na- some next level. So right. I'm like, you know, better to not. I've heard, I've read some crazy Tinder right. articles about how people have got murdered and all. So I'm a little paranoid. <laughs> But after that, uh, when I stopped working in an office and I stopped doing things like that and stopped going out too much and being health conscious, then you stop meeting people only. So then yeah. you're like, then you start thinking about, oh, maybe I should join a dating app. But then at the same time, because of uh, you know the fans and the followers and stuff, it becomes a bit difficult. So I just never tried one. Yeah, uh, I've always wanted to, but uh, maybe right. you can design an app for me, yes. and I guess maybe you should app. first start with trying my like blind dating project. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. yeah. Do you think it's really like possible to start a relationship online, or like you know? Um, uh, I think it is. You remember we used to have awkward and MSN messenger and all yes, this, yes, right? Yes, yes. That's where I'm I met my sure. husband. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we yeah had like I, I like we you're a living example and if those <laughs> things could work then these are so much more advanced that I'm yeah. sure they can work like I know someone who met um, her boyfriend on Tinder and like they've decided to be together and get married and stuff and right. it and then Tinder's not the you know the the app which everyone looks at like a permanent fixture in your life right. but uh, but it but it's possible i think when you find people who are looking for the same thing then then it's possible and also what like people may be looking for just hook up or whatever but then when they find that one person their mind can change so yeah. i think it's very possible yeah. yeah so if you were to let's say you know uh, hypothetically speaking like if yeah. you were to actually meet somebody on one of these apps and you know you were to go on a date with them like what yeah. makes for a good date good first date with a guy like first of all like i know people are facaded and they are very kind of guarded and they don't want to kind of show who the real them is yeah. but that's the huge turn off for me like right. if you're just yourself at least i know that i'm dealing with someone who's comfortable with themselves right you know that's right. that's the most important like like for example even say say the guy just is a massive foodie and he loves food and almost to the extent where he looks like he's greedy or gluttonous or whatever but like if you want to order a lot just order a lot you know like i i'm not going to judge you based on the fact fact that like 
you're eating too much or like and i know what some if, women who fight but <laughs> what if he burps <laughs> yeah if he burps i'll be like dude that's disgusting but because i have five <laughs> brothers i'm not going to judge a burp like my brothers can see the alphabet well burp like i it's it's like those maybe it's just maybe because i have five brothers that i just know that guys are just guys and they're just who they are yeah. and i can't have an issue with it right you know right but uh, i don't know if he comes if fully coked up or like fully on, like on some crazy <laughs> drug or something i'll be like listen just uh, <laughs> that that's that's a bad date for me right. like that would right. be as a bad date like if you right uh yeah if he if he can't handle himself and he's constantly high or something then that right it. right yeah if if someone were to set, set you up on a blind date could be me yeah. for instance uh yeah. uh what would be important for you to go on that blind date like what would convince you to go on that blind date i've gone not not exactly on a blind date i've always said no to these things but um yeah. in the recent past i had i had uh, done a setup like one of my friends was like you know okay. uh i want to set you up with this guy like you yeah. know, and then anyway yeah. you've met him before and talk, yeah. but every time he's going to do you you're in a relationship so he's never so i did i did uh, give it a shot once and uh, we had a great conversation because it was in a group it was not one on one so the setup was like sure. in a group so sure. uh, i think that also kind of broke the ice where okay, we, we could talk to other people if it got awkward with each other you know <laughs> right right i'll yeah. just go get another drink <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i i just need a tea <laughs> another really important thing pre is that the guy needs to be single you know i know people who've gone on <laughs> dates with guys who are not single okay and the guy has not mentioned that he's right. not single i know right. obviously if you are doing it and if you know if if you're organizing something you're going to do your background checks and know that the people are single right. so i feel like just uh, if i know that the person uh has has just been honest and kind of uh, transparent with the situation i think that's uh that so I would, where do I would you draw the be... line where do you draw the line and so like cuz i see a lot of stuff where people say uh, you know like uh, you know someone might say that they're single but then yeah. later they might tell you that they are bisexual or, uh-huh. or after a few days they might tell you that they're also bipolar like where do you draw the yeah, line yeah, how yeah. much should people yeah. tell you for you to feel comfortable but still not judge them and say hey, i don't want to meet this guy where where do you draw that line for me for me it's not a very uh, for me the line is is far out into the into the possibilities because i have been with people before who who had mental issues who had uh, diagnoses you know before and uh, i feel like everyone's on a road to recovery or as long as they want to be on a road to recovery right it's good right. enough you know right um and i just feel like starting it off with honesty gives you a place to start from and gives you a place to there's a little bit of fear yeah. of judgment right like that the other person might yeah. not understand what what i'm saying or that they might judge me because they don't know me well enough yeah. and we're just meeting for the first time so people yeah. may not feel very comfortable to open up so yeah yeah uh, how do and you that how is different we yeah, are like i i definitely open up a lot more than the usual girl would on a first date so i mm-hmm. completely empathize with that uh where the, the guy just instantly feels like i'm in love with him because i'm fully opening up <laughs> or right. like i'm being so friendly right. right but that's just uh that's just me i'm a over friendly like person but uh, it's not always a good thing but uh, but i i definitely understand that like i understand that people and another thing is um, because i'm of the field that i'm in right for my, for my mm-hmm. masters for two and a half years i learned about social and emotional behavior and you know abnormal brains and normal brains and what what changes when you have a diagnosis like um, when there's less serotonin in your in your system and when there's more oxytocin in your system like yeah. how how it leads to different behavior it makes you feel like yeah everybody ultimately has their own issues and uh, right. i i need to be more maybe i need to be more uh, empathetic when it comes to like okay be honest please be brutally honest i maybe i should give them more time or kind yeah. of you know so has has like the last 3 months now covid like done anything in terms of the way you're meeting people or your friends are introducing you to somebody or like Oh my god it has been, been a dry period. <laughs> it's been very dry, very dry, but it also kind of makes me think about my past relationships 
and it right. makes me think about like could that have worked maybe it could have worked because i feel like we're all in a state of de- desperation when it comes to everything like i was talking to my friend vindya right and she was like dude no decisions should be made during this time <laughs> because yeah. everybody is like even you were also saying it the other yeah, day yeah right? exactly like, yeah <laughs> never make a decision uh-huh. now like it's it's a terrible time yeah terrible yeah. time to make a decision because you yeah. you you don't know what you're basing your decision on like, yeah, because yeah, i sometimes feel like okay now after it goes okay even after covid level of social interaction is not going to be like drastically different right everyone's still going to be slightly warming up to the idea of the groups and stuff like that yeah, and yeah. Uh, dance floors and you know chilling to, in groups is going to become much less right. and uh, so it makes me think will i ever meet someone <laughs> <laughs> like how do you think this whole covid will affect dating like what is like dating what, apps what uh, i mean all i feel like in general people are going to use dating apps way more okay uh because i just feel like your your ability to meet people socially is has gone down a lot like just yeah. the possibility of it happening itself has gone down a lot yeah but uh, dating in general um i don't think people are in a very because of the huge issues that are going on right now in the world like things that are at hand i feel like it's trivialized people's love lives right or at least it's done that for me let me speak right. for myself it's it's made me seem like okay that's not that much of a priority you know sure sure like there are other things like there are people dying there are migrant laborers who are just like living off of absolutely no food and like it just makes you feel like uh you you need to have a higher purpose than your own love life and your you know you your ability to kind of leave a legacy or procreate or whatever i i feel right. like it has pushed the priority back a bit for me interesting uh, but i don't know about everybody else that's I interesting i feel like people who are living alone will definitely definitely want uh, uh living alone during people who are living alone during this lockdown i'm sure they will be thinking about having someone uh, or you know I'm pretty sure they'll be thinking about it differently from me because I've been living with like eight to ten people. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Like, I don't need one more person <laughs> in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But but, but it's why do you say interesting? Because yeah, it's interesting that you say that because a lo- you know quite a few people have reached out and they've said, oh, you know, this lockdown has made me think a lot about myself. You know. uh maybe you know i'm just happy being single like you know i should like this is how my life's going to be and i've got to embrace it and but they say it out of a sort of like some place of bitterness maybe a little settling. bit where they say yeah settling to be single because you know covid obviously made meeting new people difficult um but one of the one of the greatest things about like you know being single and enjoying your life is that you come across as an attractive person to like to others right like that's when you're most likely to attract somebody when you're happy being on your own enjoying your life to the fullest right um how how can yeah. people how can how can yeah, people actually, actually makes a lot of sense yeah yeah it is it is a very attractive quality to have because it shows that you're kind of sorted in in yeah. that sense um i i mean yeah personally i feel that it's you know when you want to share share your life with someone it's a more richer like it's a, just a richer experience yeah uh, as opposed to doing it all by all by yourself but at the same time when uh, when your work is going extremely well and you have enough well wishers and people to push you and people to make you grow and all that you don't really need that that one extra person yeah. so yeah. um I've always been like ever since i was in the 10th grade i've always dated people so maybe i'm just used to it right. but um so this is one uh, friend of mine now uh, who's moved out of the country and her husband uh, left her after she had uh, delivered a baby and oh, wow. uh, she obviously found it extremely difficult the first year um but she has found herself and she has kind of uh like she's completely fine without someone right now she's not even looking for someone right, right. she's she the her son is like the love of her life but she's she's the, and that is something that i really find amazing you know to right. to not want that one person again to not want to look for it even after a couple of years like 
she's just absolutely happy in her own uh, life and she yeah. maybe maybe because you learn from your past experiences also that it's not something that you should really die to have yeah uh, but i'm i i have very like i in the sense like i've not been through experiences like that to know right for me yeah. a relationship's always been a place where i'm like you know yeah. more comfortable with myself i need that one person to share everything with and yeah, yeah. so i'm sure raising a uh, one child yeah, is easier than raising two children <laughs> Oh god yeah I like the husband <laughs> and the <laughs> can imagine yeah. cool awesome that, i that, mean that, for the longest for the longest that. time i know that you always wanted to have like lots of babies and like all of that um yeah oh god the maternal <laughs> instincts i have a kitten now and all my maternal i know i saw that it's like and i feel too. like i'm already a mother <laughs> that's yeah. damn cute so, actually what's oh the kitten god. called i i saw pictures but like i, I don't think i noticed it maple Maple. Oh, is that a girl Maple. or a boy? Or yeah. Like, you know, gender. <laughs> a girl, girl. Okay. It's so funny because when I spelt it as maple, someone was like, "Is it maple?" I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> please." <laughs> it's a girl. If it was a guy, maybe maple. But yeah. I think maple is great, and it's M A Y because she came into our lives in May. Oh. So okay. it's maple. Okay. okay. <laughs> but yeah, she's too cute. <laughs> I was talking about her, and she could hear me. Oh okay 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 <laughs> chill out she's like where have you been for this long okay go 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 have have some water yeah awesome okay uh, this is this Maybe. is definitely so, fun um, yeah did we cover most of the stuff yeah i think so uh, yeah we should there is there's so much more to talk about but yeah. it was yeah very yeah. Uh, we should me also think lots yeah. we should do more of this and maybe you should even like sign up on dinner club which is my blind dating project hopefully we'll find yeah i should who is your mature uh, <laughs> and cool like that so yeah crazy i don't know where you're going to find this person from my mom keeps saying yeah, you you have to manufacture someone for you and all of that yeah support. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i'll have some faith and true, hope true. and i will see you on that app So thank you so much for doing this uh, it's it's been loads of fun thank you